Hey everyone, welcome to Under the Covers. Um, today I'm going to get under the covers of Night by Ellie Wiesel. Uh, it was written in 1956. Um, there's many different translations and uh, versions of this book, but this is the one I'm going off of. Um, the novel is 115 pages. It's got a four-page um, Nobel Peace Prize that uh, speech, Ellie Wiesel's Nobel Peace prize speech. Um, it also is a 21 page preface with stuff that he included or stuff that he changed in the story based off his uh, real life experiences during the Holocaust. Um, if anyone, if no one's familiar with this book, it's about, um, it's a lot of people say it's fiction. A lot of people say it's a memoir. A lot of people say it's um, an autobiography. A lot of people say it's a uh, historical fiction. A lot of people say it's nonfiction, but um, I'm going to call it a memoir. Um, a lot of people have had to read this in like middle school and high school, and um, I, I believe I had to read it in high school because as I was reading it, I remembered a lot of things from this novel. And um, before I get into the novel, I'm going to uh, show you guys what I use to mark my pages because um, that's what I do on my channel. I used my UIC bus pass from last semester, or my CTA pass, and I also used this pen, which is from the Sherman Health Systems, whatever that is. I don't know, I found it somewhere. Um, getting into the plot of this novel a little bit, um, it follows Eliezer and his father and their, um, their their journey from Siget to Buchenwald, I believe it's called, in um, Germany. I believe it's in Germany. And uh, along the way, Eliezer and his father have to look out for each other because they're being sent to a concentration camp. And um, eventually, Eliezer's father becomes too weak, and Eliezer has to take care of him. And there's this constant struggle, like an internal struggle to take care of his father or to leave him behind. And Eliezer, up until the very end, stays with his father and never gives up on him. And his father never gives up on him either. And there's this um, relationship between the two. And um, Elie Wiesel puts it so simply in the book. And it's just, um, his the writing style is very simple and when I say that it's like it's not a knock on him. He just he avoids flowery flowery language and he um he just cuts straight to the point for most of it and um he just does a great job of giving you the details as he sees them or as he saw them um during during his experience. And um one of the themes in this book I find very interesting was the um, the faith in God versus the lack of faith in God, and um, and he is very um, devout in his religion, and he starts to lose his faith as he progresses, as the story progresses. But he also regains elements of his faith back when um, something happens in their favor. But then he also goes back to not having faith, and there's just this. We, um, interesting balance between the two. Another thing in the, in the narration that um, that Wiesel does um, masterfully is his talk about food and the lack of food and just the lack of basic necessities like blankets to keep warm or um, water or you know shelter and um, the scenes where he does talk about eating food he talks about eating soup and just scraps of bread and the way he writes it, like, even, like, when, as you're reading it, like, that makes you hungry. Just just wanting to have these, like, little scraps of bread. And um, it really plays into the the cruel and unusual punishment that the Nazis used to, um, to bring uh, the Jewish people into these concentration camps. And um, it also shows the lack of humanity that was going on at the time. And um, a passage from the book that I want to... I want to read um, helps show that, and it just show and um, it also shows results the language he uses and and the terms he uses that just make them his writing so like simplistic but very powerful. <clears throat> Faster, you filthy dogs! 
We were no longer marching, we were running, like automatons. The SS were running as well, weapons in hand. We looked as though we were running from them. The night was pitch black. From time to time a shot exploded in the darkness. They had orders to shoot anyone who could not sustain the pace. Their fingers on their triggers. They did not deprive themselves of the pleasure. If one of us stopped for a second, a quick shot eliminated the filthy dog. I was putting one foot in front of the other, like a machine. I was dragging this emaciated body that was still such a weight. If only I could shed it. Though I tried to put it out of my mind, I couldn't help thinking that there were two of us, my body and I, and I hated that body. I kept repeating to myself, don't think, don't stop, run. And that just, um, that passage just shows the loss of humanity. They, they no longer be, are human. Um, they're just going off instinct off of what they're being told to do, like almost like robots, like he says. And um, it's just, it just, that passage just speaks to how, how powerful the novel is. Just the language from the language that he uses, that's so simplistic. And it just really shows like the lack of humanity that was going on and how, how something like this could be allowed to be happening. And it's just, um, it's hard to say it's a good book because, you know, there's so many Jewish people being killed. Not just Jewish people, but um, all different sorts of races that the Nazis were opposed to. But uh, this book in particular focuses on the Jewish people. And it's hard to say it's a good book because, you know, what's good about, you know, a lot of Jews being killed? Nothing is good about that. But um, I think it raises people's awareness of, you know, how how extreme things can get sometimes and how some people don't react to it and how more wasn't done more wasn't done to to stop this and um how it escalated so quickly and um if you if you do get this edition i recommend um reading Wiesel's Nobel Peace Prize speech because it's um it's just as powerful as the novel and um this uh actually this edition is i believe it's the 2006 edition so if you if you haven't read it before you really should because it's um it's a great piece of history um it's also um just a a great um written work i guess i can't really you can't really call it fiction because it's based off his life um, you can't call it nonfiction because some he changes some of the stuff. He he mentions that in the preface, which I also found really interesting. But um, yeah, it's hard to uh, it's hard to say what it is, you know. But it really is a a true great piece of literature. Um, so I'm gonna give it five out of five stars because it was just amazing. Um, the next book I'm reading, I um, will be um, reviewing for everyone is sorry about that. The next book I'll be reviewing is the brief one, the brief wondrous life of Oscar Wilde or Woe uh, by Juno Diaz. I'm actually reading it right now for class, so this will be the next book I'll be reading. Um, if you read Night and want to share what you thought with me, um, leave some comments downstairs in the comment section. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe to me, subscribe to me too. That's cool. Um, I'm going to post this video on my Facebook, so if you're friends with me on Facebook, leave comments there if you don't have a YouTube account. Um, if you if you've read the brief wonder if wondrous life of Oscar Wilde and wanna, you know, tell me what you think of that too without spoiling it. Don't spoil it for me. Um, you can also leave comments too. Um, thanks for getting under the covers with me, and I'll see you next time.